Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Trump announces ATC privatization plans, video release of early Kitty Hawk Flyer test flights, quadcopter saves deer from agricultural equipment. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's June 6, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In a White House announcement that was long on hyperbole and short on substance, President Donald Trump announced his plan for shifting air traffic control from the FAA to a private, nonprofit corporation in a speech from the East Room of the White House, though few, if any, details were revealed. In the 11-minute speech, Trump criticized the FAA for continuing to use a system that has stuck painfully in the past and the billions of dollars that have been wasted on its modernization efforts to bring NextGen online. Trump said that the nonprofit form to run ATC would be self-financing, a new entity that will not need taxpayer money for its operation. Trump claimed that the plan would mean a reduction in airfares. He added that the plan would mean more stability and growth opportunities for the controllers themselves and also promised support for smaller airports. Representative Bill Schuster and SecTrans Elaine Chow were among those joining Trump on stage. Also present were several airline executives, as well as representatives of passenger advocacy groups and controller pilot unions, all of whom he said strongly support privatization. Noticeably absent from the East Room stage was FAA Administrator Michael Huerta. Industry reaction thus far has been largely negative. We'll present more info as it becomes available. About a month ago, Kitty Hawk, a company backed by Google co-founder Larry Page, unveiled the prototype Kitty Hawk Flyer to the public. The aircraft is essentially a multi-copter capable of carrying one person. Now the company has released a behind-the-scenes video of some of the early test flights of the aircraft. The tethered flights were conducted over water, but eventually they were allowed to fly freely. The flyer is controlled using thumbsticks like those on popular video games. The right thumb controls attitude and the left thumb controls altitude and heading. The onboard computers anticipate the pilot's intentions and translate them into smooth inputs. The goal is to make the flyer as easy to operate as riding a bicycle. And while it may lead to a flying car, it would appear to have a lot of appeal for those who have become bored with their jet skis, kiteboards, or off-road vehicles. Kitty Hawk says that its mission is to make the dream of personal flight a reality. We believe when everyone has access to personal flight, a new limitless world of opportunity will open up to them. At Kitty Hawk, we engineer, design, and build safe, fun, easy-to-fly aircraft. After the break, Bambi Copter saves a deer. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne's Sea Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. Welcome back. Call it the Bambi Copter, a hunter in Norway is using his quadcopter to help find fawns in farmers' fields to save them from being killed by mowing equipment. Ruprecht Walsh has been flying over fields ready for harvesting in an effort to protect deer up to four weeks of age from agricultural combines harvesting crops. The DJI Inspire 1 is equipped with a thermal imaging camera which helps Walsh locate deer that are hunkered down in the field. The deer do not develop proper instincts to avoid machinery until they are about four weeks old and will simply cower in tall grass when the machinery approaches. Walsh says he flies over meadows early in the morning when the deer are easiest to find on thermal cameras. If one is located, they go out in the field and carry it out before the harvesting begins. 
Walsh said he's happy to provide the service, but would like farmers to help offset the cost. The drone with a thermal camera costs the equivalent of about $1,400. Farmers are obliged by law not to injure an animal while mowing. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. The 40th anniversary celebration of the Carlisle Flying Club is Saturday, June 10th at 2017, noon to 4 p.m. at Carlisle Airport, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. FOSS presentation, food and beverages, fly-in or drive-in, and activities for kids, too. Saturday, June 10th at 2017 at Cherokee County Airport, Jacksonville, Texas, join EAA Chapter 1592 for a pancake brunch from 10 a.m. till noon. Bring a friend and some stories to share. Saturday, June 10th at 2017, a fly into summer will be at Lakeland Linder Airport. Fly into summer will be a day-long summer festival on June 10th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Centered around aviation for a target age range of 5 to 12 years old. It will kick off the summer for these kids and allow them to peek inside the industry of aviation while engaging them in fun summer activities. After these messages, collision avoidance technology is big business. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A new report forecasts that global airborne collision avoidance system market is projected to grow from $6.04 billion in 2017 to $7.97 billion by 2022, at a compound annual growth rate at 5.68% from 2017 to 2022. A rise in the number of UAVs in the commercial airspace and the increased deliveries of the number of aircraft are major factors. Last year, Aviation Insurance Resources helped one lucky recipient get her aviation career back on track and work towards more ratings. Once again, a $500 aviation scholarship is being offered for student pilots and pilots to help further their training. The Get Into the Air scholarship can be used towards any phase of flight training, a flight review, written exam, instrument proficiency check, or a check ride. The 3000th F-35A Lightning II sortie departed Hill AFB generated by maintainers from the active duty 388th Fighter Wing and Air Force Reserve's 419th Fighter Wing, May 22, 2017. That sortie and all others flown that day were carried out with a new version of the Autonomic Logistics Information System. It's the F-35A's information technology infrastructure. The FAA has denied a petition by the South Old Town in New York asking that helicopters flying to East End in the Hamptons use an established South Shore route. The FAA sent a letter to the South Old Supervisor, Scott Russell, saying that the agency had carefully reviewed the petition and determined that the petition does not identify an immediate safety or security concern that would be resolved by eliminating the NSR and mandating the SSR. PAL-V has opened a new hall for the assembly of the first PAL-V Liberties to be used for the production of the first three production vehicles. PAL-V will start the final assembly in October of this year. First production will start in the course of 2018. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. If you live in Illinois and you are a pilot, the state government has found a way to extract another $20 from your wallet. Call it what you will, but it looks a lot like a pilot tax. Pilots who reside in Illinois are required to register their federal certificate with the state for a minimal fee. 
According to state regulations, no person shall engage in the operation of aircraft in Illinois unless current and qualified under 14 CFR 61, effective October 1, 2002. Notable exemptions to pilot registration include military pilots, non-solo student pilots, pilots flying aircraft exclusively engaged in interstate or foreign commerce, and non-Illinois residents lawfully registered in their home state. All holders of federal airman certificates engaged in the operation of aircraft in Illinois shall complete an application for registration of federal airman certificate, AER 1967 form, within 30 days after establishing residency in Illinois. Each completed application shall contain at least the same information that is shown on the federal airman certificate, including all ratings attached to the certificate. The registration fee is $20. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.